thousand years ago in the town of Nazareth lived a young woman named Mary. She was engaged to be married to Joseph a carpenter. One day, the angel of the Lord appeared to her and told her that she was going to bear the Son of God. Soon after the angel's visit, Mary and Joseph were married. Mary was due to have a baby when a new leader named Caesar Augustus ordered all people to go back to their homeland for a census. So Joseph and Mary headed back to Bethlehem, Joseph's hometown. Mary and Joseph, weary from their long journey and with Mary about to have a baby, soon began looking for a place to sleep. But every place they went to, they were turned away because it was full, until at last they came to a small inn. They asked the innkeeper for a room to stay and the kind innkeeper took pity on them. He offered them some room in the manger. Joseph made a warm place for Mary. Few hours later, Mary gave birth to little Jesus. Mary wrapped Jesus in strips of cloth and gently laid Jesus in the manger. Sing a song, a 
had brought along a great loss to Carmel family as our dear manager Reverend Dr. John Edapalli was called to eternal reward on Friday 19th November. Life works upon compensating balances. The pain on losing something equates to the happiness on gaining something. One such blessing bestowed upon the Carmel family is our new manager. With his subject of interest being chemistry, he started his professional career as a teacher in St. Joseph's High Secondary School, Poverty, and later on in Deepthi High Secondary School, Talur. He was prior of Poverty Monastery as well as Talur Monastery. He served as the secretary to Father Provincial of Devamada Province. After his retirement as principal of Deepthi High Secondary School, Talur, he was in USA for a short period. A professional guitarist, he has now joined the Kamal family to guide us along. With all due respect, let's welcome our new manager, Reverend Father Sebi Palamatata, to Kamal Academy. May I now invite our manager for the presidential address. Father, please. I wish you all a God-filled Christmas and a prosperous New Year 2022. Christmas reminds us and assures us God's love for us all. His love for us is infinite, constant, and all-embracing and never-ending. He passionately loves us at every moment since we all are his children he sent his son jesus whose birthday we celebrate at christmas so as to be with us in person we have been far away from him have come closer during this pandemic he cares for us let us thank him for his self-gift and pray that we too may give ourselves to God and to our brothers and sisters, especially those in need. It will be the best way to prepare for Christmas. I pray that you all have a wonderful Christmas and an amazing year 2022. Thank you.
I am here to wish you a Merry Christmas to the students of Carmel Academy, Chanapuri, and their families, friends, and well-wishers. My name is Father Shanti. I am working in Papua New Guinea, a mission country close to Australia. As I am getting this privilege to give you a Christmas message, I wanted to say that Christmas simply means God became a man, born in a manger with utter poverty. As we know very well from the stories, from the history, from the Bible, from the Catholic tradition, that as Jesus was born, there was no space for him. Why it is like that? And I strongly believe during these days, particularly just after the COVID, when we are struggling to grappling with reality, how are we going ahead with insecurity and with a whole lot of doubt and tension and confusion. I believe that that poverty has a true meaning. God leaving everything behind, becoming a man, born in a manger, demonstrating that he is ready to struggle with us. He is so much desired to go with us because we are human persons, human beings. We have a whole lot of struggle. We don't know how to deal with some time. As we know very well during this period of COVID lockdown, many families got into a whole lot of trouble financially, losing their job closing the doors and windows and staying inside. And many families, they underwent utter poverty, eating just a minimum. I know very well in the sense, almost I had a eight to nine hundred people calling for counseling session because they were desperate. They could not find money to buy their things. They could not find whatever they required for their daily life situation. And such a time, I think remembering, recalling, understanding the meaning of poverty, it is something great for our life. We never wandered COVID like disaster, but it happened. It was such a pandemic, caught everywhere, every nook and corner of the world. And everyone struggled, suffered like anything, whether they are Catholic, whether they are Hindus, whether they are Muslim, black or white, rich or poor, everyone underwent a sort of experience which was very much part and parcel of that poverty. And I think Christmas when we celebrate particularly, it is something to do with the Catholic faith, but the whole world, we can learn that the poverty which Jesus showed by his very birth in that small manger in a cow shed, that was something part and parcel of our life. So I am here to tell you that that poverty we must enjoy because we are human beings. We have all social media, latest advancement of science and technology. We are just going after one after the other and there is a temptation to forget about who is that God, why that God is. And we have so many questions because in the modern world, we have endless questions because of the social media. We are very superficial too. We believe and rely on more what is in social media than what is really in the authentic sense in the scripture, in the foundation, in the teachings of the church, and in the tradition, etc., etc. So in that context, I think we must remember the concept of poverty is part and parcel of our life as long as it is very much reminded us by this Christmas celebration. And during this utter poverty, how we can become more human, human in the sense, feeling the concern for the other. As you know very well, in the families, now we have a whole lot of disaster. Husband doesn't go with the wife, wife doesn't go with the husband. Parents never get with the children. Children are not much concerned about the parents. So you know that as we are growing in our improvement in our culture, in our tradition, in our social life or our family life, 
whatever we want to say, we are losing so many values. So when we look at that, we need this poverty to remind ourselves that we are part and parcel of that whole world, that whole reality. Why? Before I was born, God never asked me, who is your father? Who should be your mother? Which language do you like to speak? Which country do you prefer to be born? He never asked us anything. But he decided that I should be a man born from this man, this woman. They are Catholic, they are Hindus, they are Muslim, whomever it is. And we grew up with what we are given, where the God placed us. And tomorrow, what will happen to us? We do not know. One of my friends, after teaching in the university in Japan, after giving number one lecture, he was driving back home. And on the way, he felt some uneasy and he took the car just side of the road and he stopped the car blinking with his red light. And the, friend, the students from the same university, when they were coming, they saw that why this process the car is just like that on the roadside. They stopped the car, they went in and they saw that this priest was holding on the steering and he had a massive heart attack and he was gone. And they had a hard time to remove that body from that car to put it in a coffin. He never, never, never imagined that he would die that. So in other words, for us, we have no any control in our hand with regard to our birth, with regard to our death. But in between, we may get enough time, 30, 50, 100, it's so depend on God in our own way of taking care of ourselves. So during that time, how are we going to make more human feeling for the other, feeling for the husband, feeling for the wife, feeling for the children, feeling for the teachers in the classroom, and whomever they are helping us wherever we are. So to get that feeling, I believe that we have four um, cardinal virtues. Catholic Church underlines these four cardinal virtues, but it is nothing to do with the Catholic's invention. These four virtues were practicing in early society. But the Catholic Church felt that that was really apt for, so they integrated with the teachings of the Catholic Church, particularly the Catechism of the Catholic Church. What are these four cardinal virtues? The number one is prudence. When we talk about the prudence, Anything we do, we should anticipate whether I am doing the right thing, whether I am doing it in the right time, am I doing with the right people, right situation. We need a whole lot of prudence. Why? Because many times we are carried by media. When we buy clothes, when we buy any electronic articles or any modern things, when we want to buy, we are pushed by, pressured by the media, social media, all are buying, so I am buying, and I might lose my money, and I end up with poverty. We, we know that very well. So that prudence, and also when we make a decision after grade 10, after grade 12, what are the studies am I going to do? How am I going to make my life in the future, in the university? Every day we need to be prudent, then only we can make proper decision, appropriate to our personality, our financial situation, and the social background, etc. The second one is called justice. Justice in today's world is very much missing. What is justice? Doing the right thing to the right people, using the right method in a given situation. Sometimes in the family, husband never understand the story of the wife. Wife never understand the husband's situation. And they are always arguing and making crazy for the children in the family. Sometimes parents never understand the needs and wants of the children. Children never understand the needs and wants of the family, parents. So there is a whole lot of injustice being done. Sometimes domestic violence, sometimes running away from the home, and so many other things, we know that. So I'm not getting into that justice in a very, very high level, but in low key, you can see wherever we are, we have a whole lot of problem with justice. The third one is called temperance. Temperance means I need courage, I need to sustain, I need to move, but all the struggles are there, all the problems are there, like COVID. 
when the lockdown declared, we were wondering how am I going to close my door and sit in my home? How am I going to leave my parents? They are living far. How am I going to meet my friends? Because I can't meet them. How am I going to get out? We don't know, but we all did it. That is called temperance. In the sense, in front of that painful, unexpected, unwanted moments, how am I going to flexibly adjust happily, satisfied, in a satisfied way? And then how can I go forward? That is called temperance. Then we have the next one is called self-confidence. What is it? I need to have that courage to go with. Courage in the sense, those who are doing studies in standard 10 and standard 12, after three months time, they are sitting for the exam. And during this exam, we need a whole lot of courage. When we get distracted, when we get into temptation, particularly social media, because during the COVID time, we are so much used to our computer, our mobile, our internet, and our Wi-Fi, and we are so attached with as if it is just like next to nature to my life, there we need to have a whole lot of courage to concentrate on our studies to get highest mark in order to achieve our future with the proper skills, training, to become a citizen of the country, citizen of our religion, wherever we are. So these four virtues, practically, if we are taking in our heart from January to December, from Sunday to Saturday, definitely poverty doesn't make any trouble for me. That's what I learned from myself. When I went to Papua New Guinea as a priest, studied, educated very well in Kerala and outside of Kerala, as I reached in the mission country, I was completely lost to it. Because as I reached there, I understood that there is no power, electricity we don't have, and there is no water. And we are in an island, we were struggling like anything. When it rains, we collect every drop of water because that water we need to cook our food, we need to wash, and we have to wash our clothes, and we have to use water for everything. And when the tank is coming down, the water is coming down, we were kneeling down and crying for help because otherwise we have to do with water from the sea, which is terribly salty water. So that poverty, I understood there. And in the beginning, I was thinking, how am I going to survive here? But I was there 16 years. Today, I tell you very frankly, that is my home. Now I am preparing to go back there in month of January, if we saw all the papers are ready and uh, the Omicron virus is not there, I am not sure. But I tell you, this is the way we can all Whatever situation we are facing with at home, poverty, injustice, so many things are there. But there, if we have a sense of that God, particularly during this Christmas time, looking at that God becoming a man in a mansion, underlining that concept of poverty, I understand who am I, what am I, where am I, and what kind of life I have to lead with. Yes, I need all the things to enjoy my life. I need money, I need a good job, I need all the gadgets to enjoy my life. But in spite of having all that, if we have a sense of that God, I didn't come to this world with my own, but he decided that I should be like this. And tomorrow I don't know what would happen, I told you already earlier. So take that concept of poverty, looking at that manger, that little baby Jesus, and try to apply anybody's life. I am not insisting saying that this is particularly fit with the Catholic faith and tradition. It is fit with everyone, as long as we have something for our own life, as a sense of direction, we can adopt, we can enjoy, and we can do it. And I take that principle of poverty, looking at that little baby Jesus in the mansion, and enjoying all the celebrations around the Christmas season, good food, good music, good uh, uh, what you call uh, rest in everything, underlining all that, 
we can still have a concept of poverty, particularly just after this COVID season, and we thank God for that. And I take this covid and opportunity one more time, looking at that poverty, I wish you wholeheartedly one more time. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the season. Thank you very much. Bye bye.
of Carmel Academy. Let me wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Christmas season fills our hearts and minds with joy and happiness. It's a wonderful time we all remember the great gift that God the Father has given us, that is Jesus Christ himself. This is an occasion for the whole world to rejoice. In the typical Christian terms, as I said earlier, it is a gift of God the Father to humanity. But if we look at this from a secular point of view, a universal point of view, it is the gift for any human person or anybody that is received without having any merit for receiving that gift. We are receiving many things every day that we do not merit, which is not based on our worthiness. It also reminds us that we are also expected to do things which are not looking at the merit of others, the worthness of others. On this Christmas season, let us love everyone regardless of their merits. Their merit is not the reason for us to love them, respect them, and to give any gift to them. This is the way we fill our heart with joy and happiness. This is the way we fill the heart of the other people with joy and happiness. And thus, we fill the whole world with joy and happiness. Wish you all a Merry Christmas and a happy 2022. God bless you all. A king is born today, and man will live forevermore because of Christmas Day. Mary's boy child Jesus Christ was born on Christmas Day. A fine morning to each one of you. The much awaited winter fest is at our threshold. Yes, my dear children, we are ready to celebrate Christmas, marking the birthday of Jesus. The very word Christmas brings to our minds wonderful memories of our own homes. Sending your Christmas cards to our beloved ones gives the start of the Christmas season, followed by the legend of Santa, the Christmas tree, the decorations of tinsel and mistletoe, melodious carol singing, midnight masses, Christmas cake, giving of gifts, all expressing the spirit of Christmas season. But the true spirit of Christmas lies much deeper than these material aspects. The real spirit of Christmas is a desire to sacrifice for others, to render service and to possess an attitude of universal brotherhood. It consists of the willingness to forget what you've done for others and to remember what others have done for you. Think only of your duties and your chance to do good and lend a helping hand to your fellow beings to see that they are also just as good as you are. During this hustle and bustle of this festive occasion, find time to turn your heart to God. 
give thanks for all the best blessings that God has given us. Especially your loving parents, siblings, friends, teachers, all who made your childhood be filled with wonderful, indelible memories. Our loved ones are really the precious gifts that God has given us. Remember, Christmas is not a day or a season, but a condition of heart and mind. Experience the joy of giving. Giving your time, your thoughts, your energy, your helping hand to the needy. Then it becomes Christmas every day. This Christmas, my wishes for you are endless. I wish that you have the best health, delightful days ahead, blissful year, bright future, and everything that comes with good tidings. May all the sweet magic of Christmas gladden your hearts and fulfill every desire of yours. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to our respected manager, Reverend Father Sebi Palamatat, Father Shanti, our guest of honor, Reverend Father Yeshudas Chungat, our principal. My festive greetings are also extended to all our dear parents, my colleagues, and of course, you, my little darlings. You are my beloved children. So Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year once again. Thank you. joy and peace. In this pandemic heat time, may Christmas fill everyone's heart with hope, hope for a better tomorrow. We celebrate Christmas to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. We should learn what Jesus Christ taught us, that is, gentle actions of kindness to those around us, to those whom we love and care for, to those whom we meet in life's busy ways. May the joy of brightening other people's lives be for us the true spirit of Christmas. Wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a wonderful and prosperous New Year. God bless you. Hello children, it's Christmas once again, a scintillating season which brings joy and peace to our hearts. It's the most wonderful time of the year. It's a time to ponder on a few lessons from the Christmas tree. Be a light in the darkness. We all, all fall over sometimes when things get tough. Add glitter. Share your gifts. You were born to sparkle even if your garlands were a little droopy. And it's okay to be a little tilted. Let us honor Christmas in our hearts this season and all the year through. Merry Christmas. Christmas is the spirit of giving without the thought of getting. It's forgetting the self and finding time for others. It's discarding the meaningless and stressing on the true values. It is the most beautiful time of the year. It's the time of great happiness. Spread the happiness all around you. May this Christmas bring you blissful moments. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your family. Good morning to all. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Romans 12.10 I pray to God to shower his love and care on you to protect you from the wrong and support you to do the right. May your Christmas be filled with merriment and bliss and your New Year with infinite learning. Wish you all Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Christmas, a glorious season with the full of grace from heaven above is here again. 
It's a time to count our blessings and be grateful for them and glorify the Almighty by doing good to others in every possible way. I hope this season fills you with faith which makes everything possible, with renewed hope which makes things work and love which makes things beautiful. May this Christmas be more than just a time of enjoyment but a way of life radiating the divine light of Jesus. Wish you all blessed Christmas and a happy new year. Christmas, a festival of God's love. Let's embrace the season with joy and an open heart. Let's embrace the spirit of joy and peace. Let's generously share our kindness with others. Let's expect blessings and joyful experiences to come into our lives. Today, let's be grateful for every opportunity to celebrate the miracle of life. May the joys of the season fill your heart with goodwill and cheers. We wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. The shining star on the top of the Christmas tree fills the dark moments of our life with the light of happiness. This holy occasion can exist only when our hearts are filled with warmth and we believe in the spirit of giving. May you experience the music of heaven during this special season. May this new year be illuminated by the joy of Christmas. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a wonderful year ahead. Thank you.
Money. pleasure to announce the achievements of our students studying German. On the occasion of the Teachers' Day, here the Centrum Trivandrum, our partner institution, teaching German to our students, had arranged a competition, Ring Out the Teacher Radio, in which the students had to teach an adult at home who had no prior knowledge of German by introducing themselves with five to eight sentences in German. The audio record of the adults was sent for the competition and the best student teachers were selected. We have six prize winners from our school. May I invite Father Yashinda Stugar, the principal, uh, to give away the awards. In A1 level, first prize goes to Edel, uh, Edwin Denny. Second prize, Vivinesh Vishwanath. and Heron Benny. Third prize, Jihan Justin and Bennett Sevi. In A2 level, the third prize goes to Delvin Denny. Congratulations to all the winners. You have made our school proud. Thank you. Thank you, Father.